Okay, hi, uh, Year 10. This is Mr Charrington. Um, this is Year 10 work for the next week for my classes and Mr Greenwood's class. Um, you'll notice straight away that the first slide doesn't say Kirshner anymore. This is because we're moving on. We will revisit Kirshner next term when you come back um, in September, but uh, for the moment we're going to move on because we can't do any liner cut work at home. And actually, it kind of suits us quite nicely to go on at this point. Um, so we're starting to think about our masks. We're starting to get a step ahead with this project. Um, and some of you might be starting to have rough ideas about which direction your mask design is going in. In other words, if you're working with wrath as your deadly sin, then you've probably already developed the facial expression or an idea of the facial expression you're thinking of using. Um, and if that's the case, then when I show you some masks on these pictures here from previous years, um, you might start to think about what colour scheme you might use um, and uh, what kind of distortion you might use. Um, I guess basing it on the photographs you took already, um, your deadly sin of wrath or envy or whatever it is, and the Kirshner work, um, this means you're coming up with some ideas, but do please um, just hold fire a bit because we want to go a bit deeper into our research first. Before we start designing initial ideas, we need to improve our ability to illustrate three-dimensional form. In other words, we need to get better at drawing uh, something that's 3D and showing that it's 3D in our drawing. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to start by researching into expressions on portrait masks. And I call them portrait masks purely to, distinct, to distinguish them from other kinds of masks you might see, like a welding mask or a ski mask um, or a diving mask, because they are used purely for protection and don't actually have any face on them uh, or an expression on them. So obviously we need to distinguish that a little bit when we do our research. We're only looking for masks that have some form of facial expression on them even if that facial expression is um, part animal or part um, fantasy or whatever. Um, so this week we're going to be researching into expressions on portrait masks and then following on from that, after that, we'll then start recapping how 3D form is illustrated in 2D drawings, in other words, how you show it through curves, marks and, and range of tone. Um, as you can see in that amazing pencil drawing, colour pencil drawing there on the bottom left, uh, where the, student, the artist has used a range of tone and curve marks uh, and mark making to kind of make us feel or believe that that is a three-dimensional face. Um, and then after that, we'll practice our own drawing to show 3D form, okay? Um, and we can use some of the knowledge we gained from the videos Mr Greenwood loaded up a couple of weeks back. Uh, I think it was a homework due on the 22nd of May on Show My Homework. Uh, where there was someone working with hyper-real drawings using uh, colour pencil, and they were doing some colour blending as well. And we'll use some of that knowledge we've gained from that when we then start to draw um, some of these masks uh, ourselves. So there's some more um, ideas of using colour pencil to express form. All right, so this week the task is to research further into expression and portrait masks, and I've given you... Uh, four examples there straight away. Um, the one on the right at the top is from Vietnam, I think, and it's some sort of ceremonial mask. Then there's a couple of gargoyles, bottom left and bottom right. And the one in the middle is a latex mould that someone might use in film or theatre to make someone look very, very different. So what I want you to do for your task is to find three or four different three-dimensional portrait mask types, okay? I say three-dimensional because I don't want them just to look like flat uh, pictures. So I'm afraid manga won't do on this front, on this case, people. It needs to be something 3D, okay? Um, and um, one way to start off, you could talk to friends and family, get some ideas. Someone might have been abroad and seen something, or they might have seen something cool in a museum. And then go and search online, okay? So look at a range of sources. Look at historical ideas, theatre, uh, cultural and religious masks. Um, make sure you've got a proper variety, all right? Masks must express a feeling or mood. They can't just be um, flat looking. And that's because they've got to fit with your project and they've got to help you come up with 
a really cool design in the end. They've got to be clearly 3D. Look for range of tone, look for shadows and curve marks um, because they'll be easier to draw and they'll help you as you go towards coming up with your own 3D mask design. Um, ideally, they should link to your idea. So if you're looking at Wrath, then try and find online um, some mask ideas that look angry. So for example, the one uh, top right and the one bottom right, both to me look pretty angry. So they would fit with Wrath. And you can, of course, use the ideas I've put on the scheme of, on this um, PowerPoint. If you think these are really good or one of them is really good, then by all means use it. Um, save the image and save the website if you can. In other words, write, make a note of it because you're going to need to write about these and you don't want to then not be able to find where it came from. Okay, so if you can, either print them off, but either way, save it or save it, uh, uh, save the link somewhere so you know where to find them again. Okay, um, before we go any further, before I tell you about what to write with the annotations, I think I better give you a bit more background about mask types and where to find them. So um, some obvious things, first of all, the mask typically covers the face, often used for disguise, performance or entertainment, often worn for protection and hunting in sports, in feasts or in wars. And obviously be careful there because some of those masks might not have a face on them. Um, even used sometimes in drama therapy or, therapy or psychotherapy. Uh, so that's quite an interesting area to look into. Some were made not to be worn, but for ornamentation. And religious use of masks has decre decreased in recent centuries. But if you look at ceremonial ritual masks uh, around the world through multiple cultures and history, um, although they tend to share characteristics, highly distinctive forms have developed in different parts of the world for different cultures. Um, and the function of the mask may be magical or religious uh, based on the faith belief. And they may also appear in rites of passage or as a makeup for a form of theatre. So, um, shut up, Mr. Chang, show us some pictures. Here are some pictures. Uh, here are some African masks. I think we did a theme day like this in year seven or eight. You might remember something like this. Thai mask from Thailand. Venetian masks from Venice in Italy. They have festivals in Venice uh, at different points of the year. And you'll see these masks everywhere there at the time. Um, Theatre and film. And I, I think that this might inspire quite a few of you because obviously there's all sorts of areas you might all go into. Steampunk. Just be careful with steampunk because um, obviously the one on the left, for example, doesn't really give you an emotion or a mood. Um, although the materials are really cool. So just be wary of, of that and make sure it ticks the box of having some emotion or expression on it. If you can't find anything online or whatever, then you could look at some museum websites. So I thought of the Pitt Rivers, because when I was about your age, I used to go there all the time and draw the masks and the shrunken heads and stuff I could see there, because I live nearby. So um, yeah, look at museum websites, uh, Museum of Natural History, Pitt Rivers, stuff like that. Um, it may not be just masks, if you think. Actually, um, gargoyles aren't masks. They're, they're not designed to be put on someone's face. But they're certainly um, masks in the traditional sense. They are a face that's been sculpted. And those top three on the right-hand side were all uh, a company in Oxford who make gargoyles based on the ones they see in Oxford colleges. So um, we have them that locally to us. The one bottom middle, I think, is from New York. But again, they're pretty expressive, aren't they? Um, again, not masks, but tiki heads, which are from somewhere in the South Pacific. Um, but again, they've got really expressive faces, and there's that exaggeration that Kirshner would be so proud of as well. All right, so um, not to go on any further, the task for this week is to find and save three or four different types of 3D portrait masks, and to write a paragraph of annotations about each one, okay? So I will load up these sentence starters onto show my homework on the brief as well. But um, I've put them as, as sentence starters just to make it easier for you all when you're thinking about what to write. But for, please don't just naturally use my sentence starters. Uh, many of you are way better than me at formulating really, really interesting sentences and paragraphs. So, um, But this is a starting point. Uh, so looking at the mask top right, for example, 
Uh, this mask is from uh, Vietnam and comes from the late 18th century. I've made that up. I have no idea when it, where it comes from or when, but um, do your research and you'll be able to do that. If you don't know where it comes from, say where you think it might come from um, or uh, maybe choose one that has got a bit more background online. Uh, I think it's meant to be the god of X or Y. I think it's meant to represent this person or I think it's meant to express anger and you can see for example in this picture that the eyebrows are really tilted and the, as are the eyes and the mouth is really pursed shut which makes me think of an angry person so um, yeah I think it's meant to represent anger would be a good answer for that bit. It looks like it's made of and I'm not sure what this one's made out of out of I would have thought some sort of card or mache or maybe even light uh, bamboo or something like that so you could find out and if you don't know you could say what you think it's made of. Talk about the colours being used the materials to make it and so on. Uh, the sculptor who made it has used the detail um, in the head uh, dress, for example, and they've used gold paint. So you can talk about what kinds of details you can see uh, both on uh, headdresses, but also in the actual face facial features as well. It fits with my theme of, this is really important to write. So if you're looking at wrath or envy or whatever, then explain why you chose it. It fits with my theme of wrath because we can see that this mask is really expressing an angry face. Um, now, folks, this is really important. I've written compulsory submittal. That's because every now and then, uh, every month or so, we log who is handing in work so that we can keep up to date with it. We can follow up anyone who's not managed to get work done and give them the support they need because this is coursework and you're going to need it for next year's GCSE. So um, this must be uh, your notes, your annotations can be written on a Word document or handwritten on lined paper or whatever or in the back of your book. Um, but they must then be uploaded so we can see them. OK, so on to my show, my homework for my classes and Mr Greenwood's for his. Um, and we'll make this into a nice page later with drawings and pictures and stuff. But for the moment, we just need the annotations handed in this week on Show My Homework, please. If you haven't got Show My Homework, then I'm sure email will be fine. But I think Show My Homework is ideal. OK, um, look, I've made it go red. It's really important. Please make sure you do this. Um, and that just leads me to say, well done, all of you, for the cracking work you're doing. Um, it's been really nice hearing from you, those of you who've been getting in contact, both about the PSHE work I'm setting and also about the artwork that we're all setting from the art department. Um, obviously, if you've got any questions at all, please get in touch. And um, of course, as always, stay well and stay safe. Talk soon. Bye.